I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. I'm Nicole. And I'm Jason. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. And we are very excited that you guys can join us today. Thank you very much. Today is a Shabbat. Yay! It's our little uh, drum roll here that we have. And we thank you guys very, very much for joining us. And that entry music is James Block. And if you guys, we have a, a bunch of... Um, videos that Eli put together this week and praise and worship for James Block and um, they're about an hour long a pop and we have he has a lot of music out there and for those who have not heard of him he's a very small artist out of Yisrael and um, he's just he put together really good praise and worship music and you can totally get down praising and worshiping Yah and it is great how are you guys doing out there good Good. All right, Good. let's let's start with a quick moment of prayer, and then we'll talk to everybody in the chat room. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Father, you are a gracious creator. You have given us a day of rest. You have brought us together as an ecclesia. You have delivered your word to us, and more than important of anything, you have delivered your son to us. You have delivered his sacrifice to us that we are able to live with you forever, and we can't thank you enough for this. Father, we can thank you enough by keeping your laws, statutes, and commands. We can thank you enough by being loyal to you in everything that we do. Father, you are gracious to us in everything. Father, please bless these words. Bless this ecclesia that we're holding here. And let those who need to hear this, hear this. And we thank you again for a beautiful day. We ask this in the name of Yahushua. Amen. All right. So here we are. Kate, how you doing? Good. Jade? Good. Nicole? Good. Eli? Good. And the chat room. How's our family out we in the chat room? A few people in here. All right, who we got? We got Addie, the Creole family. I don't know if the rest of them are with her, but they're Addie's on. Hi, here. Addie. Say hi, Addie. Hi, yo. We have Brother Glenn and his wife Marina. Maybe I don't know if she's there, but Brother Glenn is. Brother Glenn is here for sure. Good. So hopefully we've got the Creole family. We've got the Brother Glenn and his family. Emissary of Elohim. Emissary of Elohim and his little his little angel that he has. And Ash. I don't know how to say. We, we have him or her there on a bit, so thank you very much for joining our friends. We don't know how to say your name. Um, maybe there's a, a, a verbal guide or something you can put down there. How, how do we say it? What is it? How do you uh, try to say it? Uh, Tashereem. Tashereem? Tashereem, maybe. Okay. All right. Well, welcome. Lester, he says it's a after 1 o'clock there. Oh, so Lester, you should be in bed, you brother. Go to bed. But thank you very much. <laughs> I hope you're drinking water, brother. Hope you're feeling better. The Grand is here. Hi, uh, Graham. Hi, Graham. Carla. Carla and family. Carla, dear sister Carla, we love you, dear sis. Thank you so much for joining in. A couple new names that I haven't seen before is Ruth Meadows Dukes. She's from Arizona. Hi, Ruth. And Maria Vallon. Maria Vallon. Okay. And then we have Zachariah and oh, Rhiannon. Zach, Zach and Rhiannon. Hi, guys. We're here, too. Hi, everybody. And that's it. That's it. Okay, well, thank you guys very, very much. Um, for those who have never heard of the Yahoo and the Tor channel, we are a small little family. We live out in the middle of a jungle. Our roof is very noisy. Our dogs are very noisy. So I would say apologies right now if you hear any of that break up. Hopefully this week we will have good, solid internet. And for those who have not 
listened to this before, and there are a lot of people that actually will see a live uh, video going on, and they will jump in here. And if this is your very first time before you guys click out of here, I would like to encourage you guys that we're just about to go over the most precious things that you will ever, ever hear in your life, something that will change your life, something that will bless your life, something that will make your life change dramatically from the world that we used to live in. And we call these things the law, statutes, and commands of our creator. And they are good for today. They are good for yesterday. They are good for all time. And in fact, we learned because we were reading out of the Targums that they were created 2,000 years before creation was ever there. So we, we know that these are not something that was just created on a whim. It was not something that was just him hot about. Our creator put in very good design and extreme great architecture to these laws, statutes, and commands. And when we keep them, we can walk in a holiness. And a lot of people will, will, will condemn us and say, well, you, you, you think you're holier than thou or you're a holy roller or you, nobody can keep the laws, statutes, and commands. And before you, you jump to those conclusions, I would strongly urge you to listen to them. And when we are reading through them, fig, figure out what laws are not good for you. There's no Levitical laws here. There's no laws that we have a priesthood for. And we don't need a Levitical priesthood because we have a Melchizedek priest. We have the best priest of all time. And that is Messiah Yahushua. For those who do not know who he is, there were no J's in Hebrew. So a Hebrew's man, man's name would have never been called Jesus. So our Messiah's name is Yahushua, and that means Yah dwells with us. It is not Yahuwah. Or it is not the creator. Jesus is not God, and God is not Jesus. One is the Father. One is the Son. Two separate entities, and there's no places in Scripture anywhere that it says they are the exact same entity. In fact, it says other places that our creator is jealous. It says there are no other gods before him. And if he was to make himself another god, or if we were supposed to worship Jesus as most people do, that's not what he says. In fact, Messiah Yahushua tells us exactly how to pray to our father. And it starts out with our father who art in heaven. So that's where I'd like to start. And are you guys ready? Is everyone ready out there? Yep. Okay, so we will go through these, and we are just going to go through these laws, statutes, and commandments, and these are very important to do. And I believe if you were back in the days um, you where they were actually had temples and priests, that they would be doing a lot of the same stuff you're hearing on a Shabbat, just like this. Okay, commandment number one is be fruitful. Commandment number two, multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living creature. Okay, the herb bearing in every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Speak into the mics, gentlemen. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's covenants, laws, statutes, and commandments. Okay, and slow down a little bit, Jade. We're not on a, a race. Nobody's here is on a verbal race. When he says this one, it's, it's a, there's a lot to this, and I don't want to run through these because this says 53 times that we are told that we need to guard are, are the, the laws that we're reading right here. We're told to guard these and to, to write them on our hearts, minds, and souls. And the only way that we will ever write them on our hearts, minds, and souls is by repeating them. And so 53 times is that last commandment. And that was only commandment number 11. And we're told 53 times to guard it. And so if anyone understands what it's like to be a parent and to tell their kids things, if you tell your kids things 53 times and they're still not doing them, that makes them a very bad child. Okay, continue on. Every male shall be circumcised eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Keep the feast of unleavened bread, Matzah. There's one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ebrim. Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven image. Yes, do not make any graven image. Just do not bring Yahuwah's name to naught. Keep the Shabbat. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusation against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. Yahuwah's laws for criminals. 
You shall stone the witches, wizards, and mediums, and you should not be around them. And this is the point I will take this. We haven't done a lot of videos on this channel regarding Halloween, right? Because we know that, well, I, I, I thought I should know that everybody who is walking with Yah would absolutely never walk in this kind of a pagan holiday. This isn't, and this isn't just a pagan holiday. This is the pagan holiday. If you are looking for a holiday that is part of witchcraft, that is part of wizardry, that is part of bloodletting, that is part of the most heinous evil you have ever seen in your life, this is where we are at. We are on getting to the eve of that, and it will be upon us very shortly. And if you are if, if you are a parent out there that's dressing your child up, and if you are going to a, a church of man, and you're having a festival holidays and things in the name of, of Halloween, there is no such festival. And in fact, that would be what you would be called going with the other nations. And if it's not bad enough that you dress your kids up as ghosts and witches and these things, a commandment says that we're supposed to kill the witches, wizards, and mediums. Now, we can't obviously do that in the day and age we are in because the entire world has gone to this kind of abomination. But if you're dressing your kids up in a something that goes against the commandments of our creator and you're allowing them in this, you're selling your soul to the devil. They're selling your, your kids' soul to the devil. Okay, do not lie with beast. No sacrifices to other gods. Do not oppress stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge unrighteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cow if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. And guys, that would that would be Facebook, right? If you're sitting on Facebook, if you're sitting on Twitter, if you're sitting on any of these feeds, this is one of the most unholy places you will ever find. You're going to find people that do not care about Elohim, Most High. You're going to find people that it's it's a busy body place. It's it's nosebook. If you want to know what everybody is doing or what it is. This is all like rumors and gossipers and things of this nature. It's it's all evil, and it's set up by the hands of Hasatan into very evil people, and it's to take your heart, mind, and soul away from our creator. And if you are letting your time be sucked up into things such as this, then you're neglecting your family, you're neglecting a lot of this stuff, and why tell the world your business? Why is it look at me, look at me, look at me? Our world should be look at Yah, look at Yah, look at Yah. Look at what Yahushua has done for us. Look at what our creator has blessed us with, the power of this, right? There should be a Yah book and everybody should be sitting there telling the blessings of Yah every single day instead of putting their, their marriage stuff out online and all their fights and their drama and all this stuff that wrecks families and wrecks society. Okay, take no bribes. Do not oppress the stranger, love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feasts of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat and his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. And do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Eli, we're at 56. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make or use anointing oil on a normal person. Do not. 58 is do not make or use this perfume on a normal person. Do not eat the fat. Do what you say you are going to do. Return what is your neighbor's. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. What is that? What are the dietary laws, everyone? Because oh. not everybody, but I mean this family, my close family here, my other family that's out there, what are the dietary laws? It is Leviticus 11. It is the entire chapter of Leviticus 11. It goes over what you should and what you should not eat. Give me five clean foods and five unclean foods. Five clean foods are cow, sheep, a deer, chicken, fish with the, scales. Okay, give me some bad food. Pig, shrimp, clam. Lobsters. Lobsters. Fish without the scales. Fish, yeah, roadkill. Catfish. Catfish. Catfish are bad. Things of that nature, right? It's all under Leviticus 11. If you have any kind of questions whatsoever... It is there, and our Creator gave us a dietary laws, and I've heard the Christians will say that it was only because He wanted to take away the food to see if they could actually do it. But when you look at the dietary laws, the food that we are not supposed to eat are things that are deadly to human beings. 
look just look up the diseases that come with eating swine. Look up the diseases that, that, the, that come with a lot of this. You can take shrimp and you can put shrimp in a bucket of filthy, disgusting water and inside of two or three weeks, that water is completely clean. You're going to go grab that shrimp and you're going to go chomp that down and you're going to blow those hormone pockets all into your mouth. You're eating stuff that is the clingers of the world. Our creator has not given them to you for candy. This is not what this is for. Okay, women's time of separation. Stay away from her during this time. Give her some peace and let her do her thing. Rest. Obey Rest. Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the day of atonement, Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corner of your fields, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Okay, hold on. I'm going back up to be holy. And I want to talk about this real quick. Because there is, I, I was thinking about this the other day, guys. And there, this is something, I guess, for all of our family out there. There's no law that says don't gamble, right? If you're going to go gamble your money, there is no law, statutes, and commands that say don't gamble. And everyone's looking at me like, where are you going with this? But when you find something such as gambling, and even though you don't have a law about it, there are a ton of other laws out there. And if we go back to just 71, where it's be holy, maybe even go back to commandment number one, to be fruitful. If we're out there gambling, number one, we're not being fruitful. We're, we're taking a chance and we're trying to spend our money. We're trying to double up our money in easy way, right? That's not being fruitful. Being holy is not going to be sitting there gambling and trying to risk what cash your family would have to trying to double it up. That's just not the way. So when we run into incidences and things in this world that we don't have a specific command for, we simply need to go over this list and wonder if even if it's not specifically stated, there could still be 20 other commands that we're breaking by say, for instance, gambling, right? That's just one of a billion other things that there's no laws for, but are they healthy to our lives? Are they healthy to our family? Are they healthy to our time? Are we being fruitful? Okay, 72, do not reap the corners of your field or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not diverse your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. Two separate kinds of fabric. We had a conversation with a gal this week on this. And a, a lot of people, um, well, and I guess when we first got into keeping Torah, the very first thing we did not do, well, it, we looked into it. We thought you could not mingle other kinds of fabrics. The fabric, this is this kinds of fabric stuff it's talking about is wool and linen. Two separate kinds of um, different kinds of fibers that are they they have um, vibrating properties. They have resonating frequency properties. And when you mix them, it actually hurts you. Now, this does not say do not mix cotton and linen. It does not say do not mix. It says specifically two separate kinds of fabrics. And we went down the path trying to find years ago, like maybe eight or nine years ago, we decided we didn't know what they was talking about. We thought any kind of fabrics, like you wouldn't mix cotton and polyester or something of the sort. So we went out trying to find socks that did not have any mixed stuff. And you will absolutely never find a pair of socks that do not have mixed fabric. This is not talking about mixing fabrics at all. This is completely talking about these two types of different kind of fabric. So and it's very important. You'll vibrate right off the map. Okay. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat of the tree. Do not eat the fruit of the tree for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Don't be a beta. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Don't consult mediums. And again, we're down we're getting into this very unholy holiday and this is all about spell casting witches and sorcery and evil and things of that nature and what do you got in the chat room brother glenn did, did quote one of the verses that were right there on that one is 1931 
Do not turn to mediums nor necromancers. Do not seek them out or make yourselves unclean by them. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Yeah, and I kid you not, when I was a kid and my mother let me watch TV, part of the advertisements on TV were these people call like, uh, like I don't know, some spiritual something and you can call them up at, at some 900 number and they would tell you your fortune or something. It was all fake and probably, but I mean, the bottom line is you shouldn't be touching this. You don't want to consult anyone except Yah at all. Okay, respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nations. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot, Omer count. Keep the feast of trumpets, Yom Terah. Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shemni Atzeret. If you blaspheme the name of Hua, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of being a Nazarite. Eli, I will fill that in Where for you. Where is easy on the four corners of your garments? Okay, oh. okay, that was important. We're, <laughs> we jumped into the So wear seat seats on the four corner of your garments. Guys, this is for sons and daughters. This is for men and women and kids and everybody. We are all instructed to have blue tassels on the side of our garments. It's not just for men. It's not just for this. It is for everybody. If you want to be in covenant with our creator, you are breaking a commandment if you are not wearing tzitzit. Okay. The law of whoever touches a corpse. Follow Yahuwah's laws of inheritance. Torah of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. When in the land, the laws of a murderer and victim's families. Do not add or take away from the word. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Okay, I'm going back to the whole gambling thing, right? Commandment 111, right? If you're looking at for, if you're trying to figure out if what you are doing is holy you just go down this list of 174 commandments and it is gambling guarding your soul mm, that may that may be a check I, I don't think that's a check off thing right i don't think you're guarding your soul if you're gambling now i'm not saying it's evil to gamble if you're sitting there playing for nothing and you're just you're it's just a, a one-time thing or something but if you're going out there to some casino and you're you're literally putting your family's life on the line by your actions that's not guarding your soul or the souls of your family Okay, learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Find the laws upon your hand and the frontlets between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorposts. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave to Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy graven images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do to their Elohim. Rejoice in all who has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken to the words of false prophets. Kill the false prophets. Do not listen and kill those that try to turn you away from Yahuwah, even if they are family members. Guys, I want to touch again on this. Again, this these are hard words to hear, but this is how important it is to Yah that people are on Yah's side. They're not one way or another. They're not mixed into man-made religions or traditions or things of that nature. He literally says those who try to turn you away from Yah, even if they are your family members, you're supposed to kill them. And, and again, these were rules for back in the days. We left them here because that is how important this is to Yah. And it, just because we can't go murder someone in the lands we are in today, because we are all in captivity. We are all in lands far away from where we should be. And we, we can't do that. But it's important to our creator. Okay. Okay. If a city has turned away from Yahuwah, burn the city and kill all of the inhabitants. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of the seven-year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart nor shut your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year, all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant Asherah poles near the altar. Any man or woman that has done wicked things in your gates, they shall be taken out and stoned. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken unto the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. The prophet has to do Deuteronomy. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with false witnesses among Torah keepers. The first child is to get the double portions. The law of the wayward son. If a man is hung to death, he shall not remain all night hung. If dead. your brother's cattle 
or clothes are lost, and you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man what pertains to a woman. If you find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies, or her eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. If you build a new house with a flat roof that is able to be lived on, you must put a railing around it. Laws for the accuser and the accused in purity of relationships. If a man has a woman, if he has a relationship, a relationship with an engaged woman, both shall be killed. Yep. If an engaged woman is raped, she's not charged with crime, but the man shall die. If a man forces himself up on a defiled, undefiled woman, he must pay the father and take her to be his wife and never divorce her. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. You may eat from your neighbor's vineyard or grain, but you may not take it out of the field. Laws of divorce. Newly married man should stay home for one year to be with his wife. Do not take a person's millstones for a pledge. If a man is found kidnapping, he shall die. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset, if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back for the forgotten chief in the field. Leave for the stranger, fatherless, and widow. You cannot give a man more than forty stripes for his judgment of his wickedness. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. If a woman comes to defend her man and grabs the other man's privates, you shall cut off her hand. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the Feast of Sukkot. Okay, well that does it for that. Let how is the um, the room going there, Miss Nicole? It's going. Um, Adiel says I found people who care about Elohim on Instagram. Is that wrong and evil too? Well, Instagram is owned by Facebook, and I don't know if you've seen what is on um, Instagram exactly, but it is a it is a wild world. Uh, I mean, if there's people that are holy there, but the rest of them ninety percent of them are not holy people. I you know I, that's the thing is is what you view on Instagram, is it holiness or is it not holiness? That is the thing. I, I don't know. I will tell you from what I know back in the day. When I had Facebook accounts, Nicole and I deleted our Facebook account, what, nine years ago? Eight? Longer than that. Ten years ago? Yeah, so we, we got rid of our Facebook account many, many, many years ago. Before we ever came here. Yeah, long before that. So, so it's been maybe 11 years. To 15. <laughs> and we do not allow our kids to have such access to such a thing. And I've never seen anything holy that comes out of it. You may find a particular person who is holy. But overall, if you look at what exactly is on Instagram, what exactly is on Facebook, look, this is all about pride. This is all about um, look at me, look at me, look at me. And that's really what it is. I understand people are out there with social stuff and they're going on there. I can't judge for the rest of the world. What I can tell you is I would never allow my kids ever on Instagram and I would never allow them on social media. Um, and it's just, it's, it's a, it's a way to be infiltrated for my kids. Now, um, I know Addie, you're, you're old enough to figure this out. Um, but it's one of those things. Do you want to stay holy? Do you not want to stay holy? Remember, it only takes one thing where your eyes are able to absorb something and you've, you've become, you know, I don't want to say lesser, but you, you, you've had doors opened up. You can never undo the wickedness that comes through your mind and your eyes. And if you are in a protected environment, stay protected because you, when you start wandering onto social media, you can see stuff that you can never undo. You can basically take a, a chip of cleanness that you guys have and it can, it can be gone. And you can, uh, my kids, I, I would be scared to death if they were on social media because they would get entrenched. They would just get entrenched and the vile evil that is on those places. There's nothing holy that is on that. So I'm not saying this, you know, I'm, I guess I have no answer for this um, other than I would not allow my kids to be on that kind of stuff at all. Okay. And so I probably didn't help you, little little Addy, but um, you, you'll figure it out. I know you will. Okay. Um, anyone have anything else? Chat room, is it quiet in there? Yeah, I think so. Everything's quiet? Okay. Well, um, a, few, a few other people that joined in. All right. Monique's here. Hey, um, Monique's here. And then a new gal, Marianne. 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 Welcome, Marianne. Okay, so this, guy's what we're going to be reading. Um, we're going to be reading the Torah, and the Torah is, is out of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Right now, we are in um, a, a, a beautiful um, book right now. We are in Genesis, and it's called Bereshith. At the bottom, we're reading out of the Hallelujah Scriptures, and prior to... 
right now, we've never had a digital version of the Hallelujah Scriptures available. And so we are reading the very first draft that Nicole has done. And Nicole, how are you doing on your scanning project? So I have all of the Tanakh, the Old Testament, completely mm -hmm. scanned. Yep. It's all done. Now I'm starting on the Gospels. Okay. And so hopefully by the end of the week, I'll have it all done. So hopefully by the end of this coming week, you guys will have the very first access, the world will, to the Hallelujah Scriptures. And Nicole is going even further because if you guys look like right here, this is the stuff that we are, as IT people, it drives us absolutely nuts. Um, like right below before, right above beasts, you guys will see in that line, that is all, that's almost impossible to get out of there unless you hand edit everything. And so Nicole has been hand editing everything and she, as she's scanning the other books and waiting for them to recompile, she's going through every single page in Genesis and clearing this out. So when you guys get the final copy of this, it won't, it will actually be uh, hopefully almost perfect. And so she is doing a very hard work and we uh, let her do her work. Okay. So the top one, guys, is the Targums of Palestine. And again, I will apologize for my roof. It's, it's popping and hissing and whizzing. I hope it doesn't annoy you guys like it does me. And okay. we do have Targums on the website to download, too, if they want to follow along with that one and I lose. Yes, if you well. guys would like to read the Targums. And I we don't know if we should leave the Targums on there yet. We, we do not know. Um, until we actually make it through our reading here as a quorum and as a family with all of you guys, once we are all done, we should see that we should say, hey, you know, this is scripture or this is not. And the Torah that we just read through, the Torah laws, that is our baseline. That is our guideline. If it adds to it or it takes away from it, that is where we are. We must absolutely put our foot down. So that's what we are doing when we are learning this. OK, you guys ready? Yep. OK, here we go. Uh, chapter seven of Hallelujah Scriptures, Genesis. And I have a plane coming over our house. It's getting real noisy here, guys. And Yahuwah said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Of all the clean beasts, take with you seven pairs, a male and his female, and of the beasts that are unclean, two, and a male and a female. Gentlemen, why did he just tell... See, this is a this is a hoax of everybody. Two They're, by twos. Yeah, two by twos. I When I was a Christian singing in the, the kids and thing, we all sang about two by twos, the animals coming in two by twos. They always forgot to tell us about the seven by sevens. Why are we dealing with two by twos and seven by sevens here? Clean and unclean animals. Animals yeah. you can eat, animals you can use for sacrifices. Yeah, that's why uh, we know that uh, Moses didn't eat the pigs, right? So, I mean, if he would have eaten a single pig and he thought it was clean, we would have no pigs nowadays. No, yeah. not Moses. And they're... Uh, Noah. I said Noah, right? You said Moses. You said Moses. Did he say Moses? Yeah, he said Moses. <clears throat> that, that's a good way to get people on a joke. You know, how many how many uh, animals did Moses take in the ark? And everyone goes, uh, two. It's not Moses. It's Noah. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, that is right. <coughs> Excuse me. If <coughs> Noah had eaten his one of the unclean animals, you would not have them as of today. Well, I'm thinking he. Uh, there's four because he has two pairs. There's seven uh, pairs and there's two. Take two. with you seven pairs, a male and his female. So there's 14, right? Seven by sevens. And the beasts that are unclean, two, a male and a female. I think it's only one and one. Yeah, I think it's one. So I think it's 14 clean animals and only two unclean animals? Yes, I believe that is what that is correct. Is that uh, everyone with me on this? Yep. Okay, so we have 14 clings, two unclings, male and female. Okay. Um, of all the cling, let's see where are we at here. Three, one, verse two, right? Two. Let's Nine, start three. two again. Of all cling beasts, take with you seven pairs, a male and his female, and of the beasts that are uncling, two, a male and his female, and of birds of the Shamaim, seven pairs, male and female, to keep offspring alive on the face of all the earth. Okay, now we're jumping up to the Targums, which is at the top here. And I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger here for everyone. Okay, and Yahuwah said to Noah, Enter thou and every one of thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of all cling cattle, take thou seven by seven, male and female. And of all cattle not cling, two and two, male and female. But of birds of the heavens, seven by seven, male and female, to preserve from them seed upon the earth. Okay. Okay, four. Four, and then back down below, everyone. For after seven more days, I am sending rain on the earth. 
40 days and 40 nights, and shall wipe from the face of the earth all that stand that I created. And Noah did according to all that Yahuwah commanded him. Now, do I need to go up to the top? Okay, back to the top. Eli's my little guy when I need to transition. Um, we're doing this as a uh, father-son duo here. Okay, for behold, at the top, I give you space of seven days. Seven days. Did I say seven days last one? Mm -hmm. Okay, seven more days. If they, w if they will be converted, it shall be forgiven them. But if they will not be converted after a time of seven days, yet set time of days, yet seven, I will cause rain to come down upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights and will destroy all bodies of man and of beast upon the earth. And Noah did according to all that Yahuwah had commanded him. So that's interesting. We, we hear that Yahuwah gave them people time to repent. If they would have repent, they would have made it into the ark as well. Yeah, they would have. I mean, that's, that's the same thing. You know, every one of us has, you know, 120 years to get right with Yah. We have a shot at this. He didn't, we're not doomed to anything. We will be doomed by our own choices or we will be saved by our own choices. Verse six. Verse six. Okay. Now, Noah, this is that in the Hallelujah Scriptures at the bottom, guys. Now, Noah was 600 years old when the floodwaters were on the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives went into the ark because of the waters of the flood. I had to switch pages. Of the cling beasts, and of the beasts that are on cling, and of the birds, and of all that creep on the earth. Two by two, they went into the ark to Noah, male and female, as Elohim had commanded Noah. And it came to be after seven days that the waters of the flood were on the earth. Okay. Back to the Targums at the top. And Noah was the, was the son of 600 years when the deluge of waters was upon the earth. So we learned Noah's 600 years, right? 600 years old. And Noah entered with his sons and his wife and the wives of his sons with him into the ark from before the waters of the deluge. Of all cattle cling and of cattle uncling, of birds and of whatever creepeth upon the earth, two and two they entered in unto Noah into the ark, male and female, as Yahuwah had instructed Noah. All right. And it was at the time of seven days after the conclusion of the morning from Methuselah that Yahuwah beheld, and lo, the sons of men had not turned. Okay? We, so, yeah, that's it. Okay. So this is interesting, right? So we remember we, this is, he gave them seven days to repent, but these seven days, they were in mourning for their pops, right? Methuselah, he dead. He gone. And yeah, yeah, took them. We know that. God took them all, like all the people of Yah, like all the lineage of Noah before that was still alive. He took them before the flood. Now they didn't have to witness any of this. Yeah, very interesting stuff. All right, so we are at 11? Yes. Yeah. Okay, in the sixth, this is at the Hallelujah Scriptures on the bottom. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep were broken up, and the windows of the Shimaim were open, and the rain was on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. On that same day, Noah and Shem and Cam and Yepheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them went into the ark. Okay, at the top, back to the Targum. And the waters of the deluge came down hotly from the heavens upon the earth. In the 600th year of the life of Noah, in the second month, which was the month of Marquesivion. What is that? Is that a uh, Babylonian name? Yep, yep. That's what is that? Some Jew name? Yep. Jewish That's the thing? Jewish second month name. So what month is this? In the second, month. second month. Okay, so this is where you guys will see the Love Babylonian months. influence that comes out of this. And I would say, well, we should ban this translation because it has Babylonian influence. I was, watch, I was reading Maccabees this morning. It's the same way. You read all the other scriptures. They've inserted month names where there are no month names. And so for those who do not understand, what we're about to read here were Tishri and Marchesavan. I've never heard of that one before. What is the normal second month? It's not called March March Shaban, is it? What is the Jewish second month's name? I have name? no idea. I've never heard of I've that before. I've never studied it, so I don't okay. know. Okay, so there it is, the month, which was the month of March Shaban. For hitherto, the months had been numbered from Tishri, again, Babylonian influence, boo, which was the beginning of the year at the completion of the world in the 17th day of the month. And that's wrong, because it's not the beginning of the year. The beginning of the year would be Aviv. Tishri is their month seven. Okay, T Street. So these the, the the numbers are all the names are all messed up on this. Yeah. So how did they how did they mess this up? I don't know because it's not the beginning of the year either because that's what the Jewish says their month seven is the beginning of the year. Right. And as you guys understand this, here's what we do not want to include. We do not want to include 
man-made traditions, traditions of men. We have month one, month two, month three, month one. We have day one, day two, day three. There are no names to the, the months and things like this. And even here, they got this kind of weird. But I'm not going to throw this out because the scriptures do this as well. So let's continue on. Um, in, that, in that day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the giants were gathered together, or, excuse me, and the giants were gathered there together with their sons and perturbed them. And afterwards, the windows of heaven were opened. Okay, we didn't get anything about the giants being perturbed, but that makes a tremendous amount of sense, right? Because you're going to go, when you see something like this, you're going to take your family out, you're going to go look, and you're going to see what in the world is going on. So, um, just interesting stuff. There's okay. still a little bit more to read, if you want to read the Jerusalem as well. Uh, let's see what the Jerusalem has. All right, let's do the Jerusalem just to be thorough. And the windows of heaven were open, and That's that was it. it. Ah, that okay. Was, we're thorough. Okay. And the rain came down upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Where are we at here? Keep going. Okay. In, the same, in that same day entered Noah and Shem and Cam and Yepeth, the sons of Noah and the wife of Noah and the three wives of his sons with him into the ark, they and every animal after his kind and all cattle after their kind and every reptile that creepeth on the earth after his kind and every fowl after its kind, every bird which flieth. And they entered to Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, in which was the breath of life. And they coming entered, male and female, and all flesh unto him, as Yahuwah had instructed him. And the word of Yahuwah covered over the door of the ark upon the face thereof. Okay, so a couple things new, right? What did we learn here? Well, we learned that the giants were perturbed. Uh, we, yeah, and it, did, we, yeah. did it say that the word of Yah shut the door? In mine it does, yeah. Does it say that? Mm -hmm. Did I read that and I missed it? I don't know if you already read it or not. Okay. Eli, are we ready on this? It's, I know you read I think you're on 14. You're on 14. Oh, am I? Did I go way yeah. down there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is kind of confusing, folks. I'm so sorry. Okay. Uh, where are we at? 14? Nicole? Yeah. Yeah, 14. Okay. Uh, went into the ark. Noah and his wives and the three wives and sons. Also, what do we know about Noah's son's wives? Uh, one of them might have had fallen DNA. Well, one of them probably had fallen DNA, right? Yes. Yeah, it had to be. Because where did we learn that they hadn't, they didn't know these women very long? I think, I think Noah went and found what, what women for his wives. I think it might be Jasher. He might have found Jasher. Something. Like, I can't remember what book it was where we had learned that they were just basically, they, they didn't know these women very long. They had just barely gotten them. And what happens is it comes under Cam's, under, uh, he got cursed, but his kids all ended up with the giant DNA, which is what Yah is trying to wipe out right here. So there's very interesting. Somewhere along this line, DNA came. And um, it was corrupted yet again. Okay. So going at the end of 13, went into the ark, they and every living creature after its kind and every beast after its kind and every creeping creature that creeps on the earth after its kind and every bird after its kind, every bird of every sort. And they went into the ark to Noah, two by two of all flesh in which is the breath of life. And those going in, male and female, of all flesh, went in as Elohim had commanded him, and Yahuwah shut him in. And the flood was on the earth forty days, and the water increased and lifted up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. And the waters were mighty and greatly increased up on the earth, and the ark moved about on the surface of the waters. So if these giants were like 500 feet, the water had to have been like 600, 700 feet to like drown these dudes. Yeah, and you know, this, this goes, this again, this is like one of these things. If you have a spinning water ball and we're a bunch of monkeys flying through space, how are you going to flood this entire thing? Where is the, there's no borders, right? There would be no borders to flood this thing. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. The whole ball thing, you know, the NASA's, I think, lying to every one of us. Okay, where are we at? Thank you. Uh, 19. 18, 19. And the waters were exceedingly mighty on the earth. And all the high mountains were under, all the Shimeim were covered. So that's going to be over 500 feet, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they covered up the mountains. The waters became mighty, 15 ama upward, and the mountains were covered. You're going to say 15 ama? Mine, yeah. Mine says 15 cubits higher. Okay. Yep. And then the mountains. So, it's 50, so 15 ama higher than the mountains. And you remember, how much is an ama, guys? 18, 18 inches. That can't Same be. Same as a cubit. 18 ama. What? That's not very right. high. Um, well, let me I can't back. Be. I have measurements. And it's higher back. than the mountain. It ain't no 18 inches, so. Can't That's be. one cubit. I think one cubit is 18 inches. Yeah. And, and so, so it this says was 15. 15 ama. Cubits. What's an ama, though? It says 15 cubits. That wouldn't be very much. 15 times 18 is nothing. We're talking 
and less Ama than 400 feet. It's either 20 inches or 17. It depends on Ama, Ama long or Shroya Ama. And the mountains were covered. So what are we seeing here? The waters became mighty. 15 Ama upward. So 20 inches upward. So higher than the mountains. So So 15 15. times 20. Higher than the mountains. Yeah, so the highest mountain probably had that up there. So So almost close 400 feet over the mountains. Okay. I don't know if our math is good on that, but we'll go with it. Okay. Where are we at here? 20 targums. 20 targums at the top. And there was a flood 40 days upon the earth, and the waters were multiplied and bare up the ark. And it was lifted from the earth, and the waters waxed mighty and increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went floating upon the face of the waters, and the waters prevailed greatly upon the earth, and all the high hills which were under the heavens were covered. Fifteen cubits higher did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered, and all flesh expired, which moveth upon the earth. You went too far. Okay, well that, that gives, so I mean that explains a little bit more, right? It's over the top of the mountain, so it's it's at least 15 cubits higher. The grand says her scripture says 22 and a half feet. Above, above. them. Right, and so that, I mean, that if you get to the top of the mountain, you're, st- you're done. And I guess that would be, those the giants, they were probably on their run to the highest mountain, right? That is, that is how they would have been doing it. They would have all gone to higher ground. You would have not been down. So everything that was out there was running for higher ground. So how many, how much feet above the mountaintops? She said, hers says 22 and a half feet. Yeah, so that, the mount, the giants and all their kids, they would have had to get to the very top of the mountains and they would have had to get, like, that would, I mean, that's just, it's a kill. It's a, it's a killing. There's nothing you could survive that. All right. Yeah. Where are we at? Uh, I think 21. Okay. And all flesh died. You guys pay attention here? Yep. Okay. And all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds and cattle and beasts and every creeping creature that creeps on earth and all mankind. Okay. We've got to go to the next page. Uh, we're almost to the end of this chapter. That is, that's going to be sad. Okay. And in whose nostrils was the breath of life, uh, excuse me, and in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life, all that was on the dry land died. So he wiped off all that, that stand, which were on the face of the ground, both man and beast, creeping creature, and bird of the Shimaim, and they were wiped off from the earth, and only Noah was left, and those with him in the ark, and the waters were mighty on the earth 150 days. Okay, let's read the, 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 the where are we at, Eli? At the very top. Okay, so we'll read now the targums here. And all flesh expired, which moveth upon the earth, of fowl and of cattle, and of wild beasts, and every moving thing that moveth upon the earth, and all the sons of men, everything in whose nostrils was the breath of life, and of all on the dry land died, and all bodies of men, and of beasts upon the face of the earth, from man to cattle, to creeping thing, and to fowl which wingeth in the air of heaven, perished from the earth, and Noah was only was left, and they who were with him in the ark and the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days. Okay, so everything on earth died except what? All the animals in the ark. That, yeah. in the ark. And? Fish. Fish, right. Why didn't the fish die? They can swim. And he needed something to eat all this stuff, right? So there would have been, you know, all these things that were, there would have been millions of bodies. Millions of bodies. They would have had millions of chickens and millions of, all these, all these different things had to get eaten. And imagine if the fish of the sea were not alive during that time, they it would have been quite the stink when this, um, when all the waters resided, and they would have had all those bodies sitting there floating everywhere. It would have been quite the scene. And I'm sure there were. I'm sure they found bodies and stuff for years and years and years to come. All right. Well, I think that is that. Um, how is the chat? Is anybody still live? Yeah, we got Allie. Allie Empanada showed up. Hey, Allie's here. Um. But that's about it. That's about it. So I guess with this, guys, we are going to conclude today's Shabbat. I, sometimes World I want to get... Worldwide Widow just popped in. Some time, oh, Worldwide Widow? Yeah. Hi, sis. How are you? So a lot of times I just want to keep running on this and, and keep rolling. And um, our only problem is our roof. It just keeps talking to us and it's really loud. I don't know if there's a perfect time that we have to do this. And I hope it doesn't bug you guys um, as much as it does bug us. It's just really loud here. So I guess this is it. Does anyone else have anything else? Anyone in the chat have anything else? Any prayer requests out there for any of you guys or anything at all? Don't see anything. Glenn Miller says he's still here. The Grand's here. She wants to know, could someone survive in the above? Like when the waters were... Nephilim on top of the mountains, could they survive if they made it to the mountains? I don't think so. I don't. I, I don't. I think the rain came out too fast. Even, yeah, well, I mean, even, here's the thing. I've been to top of mountains, and they're not... 
like flat, like you're not going to be able to stand up to the top. And when you get to the tippy top of that, if a giant was able to get up there, you can't, you, you're not going to be able to survive up there days, right? You could, remember those um, game show things where they will stick a guy on a post and he has to sit there for hours on end or something, or the water comes rushing. It's going, it, having that happen for 40 days, he probably had what, 15 days before the water got all the way to the top. So these guys are probably franticking. I mean, I don't think they died right off out of the gate. I wouldn't think so. I just don't know how fast the water. I'm sure the water came down super, super fast. But I'm sure they had a few days to go, wow, this water isn't going. The rain isn't stopping. I mean, at um, some point, they'd be out of food. Plus, everybody that ever saw Noah building this ark, all of a sudden, it's, the lights are going to come on. Like, holy cow, this this dude, we're all going to die. This guy's building a boat for a reason. So I don't know. I don't know, Graham. Um Obviously, I don't think they did. Um, somehow, the lineage passed into Cam's and to his people. And I would think that the rain would come down like super fast, like they wouldn't have had time because he opened every floodgate that there possibly was. So it all just came. Yeah, I think he opened the floodgates below and above. And above. And so, yeah, if you look at it and you wonder why the skies are blue, that could be a very good uh, tip. There may be water up there uh, above our firmament or something we just don't know about. Okay. The remnant truth just popped in and said, "I'm in desperate need of prayer." All right, what you need, brother? Or sister? It, it looks like a guy. Okay. So um, as we are doing this, if there's anyone out there that needs prayer requests, please let us know what we can target with, how we can pray. Um, and we will gladly, as a family, we will gladly pray for you guys and um, show you some love for sure. What do you got, Nicole? So Ash, and I think she, she said to say mashish or something like that. Mashish? Anyways, I could use healing for my family. My dad canceled work on his land today to honor Sabbath. Wow. Please pray for him, John Gary. Wow, congratulations. That's great. That's absolutely great. The angels, I'm sure, are rejoicing somewhere, keeping our Father's Day. That's that's amazing. And for my son, Ethan, daughter, Olivia, and their mother, Alicia. Okay, we will absolutely add this to our prayer request list out there. And uh, we are waiting on our brother or sister, right? Yeah. What's he, he got? He said anything yet, just that he was in desperate need. So. Okay. So if we don't hear anything else from you, brother or sister, on the desperate need, we will add you in there. Um, if you want to email us, please do, um, or, or leave a comment, or get a hold of us or some way. We are happy to pray for you guys. And as always, guys, please pray for us. We are always under constant threat of uh, Hasatan doing some kind of evil in our lives, and we are uh, we, we love doing what we are doing, and so we will pray for you. Please pray for us, and I hope you guys have a wonderful Shabbat. We love you guys. Thank you all for being here. and. Hanging out with us on this day. Anything else? Are you going to play another song? I will play a song. We'll hit a song on the way out. So right. what do we got? All right. Let's find something with James, and we'll just hit it. And I don't know what I'm going to hit, but here we go. Much love, everybody.
All right, before we tell everyone shalom, we're actually reading in the live chat, and so um, we will definitely pray for you. I don't, how do you say this? Remnant truth. Rem, remnant truth. Remnant truth, we'll definitely pray for you guys. Um, this is a lot of the stuff I can't say anything on YouTube. We can't, our channel will get banned. Um, remnant truth, brother, make sure you're drinking a lot of water, and this is for everybody. Um, these are the days and age where, you know, since 2019, bad things have happened to people, and I don't know what the, the situation with everyone is. But um, if you're if you're down feeling that that sick, make sure you're drinking a ton of water. The same the same stuff that I say for Lester all the time. He feels real sick, guys. The quality of water of what you guys are drinking is absolutely everything. If you guys are drinking out of your tap water, out of cities and things, you're just going to get sicker and sicker and sicker. It's it's full of chemicals. It's full of all this stuff. And if you are truly sick, my brother, like you, like this is, you feel like you're on death's door, drink fresh water. It's, bottled water is not helpful. Bottled water has all that same stuff into it. Um, we will definitely pray for you. Um, if we had a way to contact you, um, definitely please keep in touch. We love all of you guys. We love you all with, with all the hearts and possibly that we can. Um, email us. There's yeah, also e a detox. E email us too. Nicole, drop the, the chat, our email address in there. Okay. In there. Okay. Yeah. And there, there's detoxes and there's all sorts of stuff, but it's, it's probably going to be about detoxing um, your system and, you know, drinking lots and lots and lots of water. And uh, that's where you can begin. And um, I hope that helps. And definitely email us. We might be able to help you out with a few more other things and tips and things of that nature. Much love to everybody out there. I love you all. Shalom. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.